Chio has so much work left to do on his car that he sacrifices a chance to attend a baseball game with his new friends from the car club. They arrive at the stadium eager to root for Havana's home team, the Industrialists. Fernando is paying for the tickets. What they don't know is that the five of us only cost me two dollars. I knew there was something behind that. Baseball is relatively affordable in Cuba and so popular that there are 11 stadiums on the island. The largest of which is the Estadio Latino Americano. It seats more than 55,000 and in 1999 hosted a series between the Baltimore Orioles and the Cuban national team. Although the U.S. and Cuba have been estranged for over 50 years, both countries have something in common, their great love of baseball. As usual, Roberto can keep his eyes off all the food, but he is paying for all our snacks, which is nice. And I'm paying more than what he paid for the tickets. Although the concessions look different, baseball is just as huge a national pastime in Cuba as it is in the U.S. In the stadium, there are guys selling everything. Popcorn, banana chips, almond cheese sandwiches. He had two pork sandwiches. And then he was saying that me, no, two of them. No, I only ate one. I saw you. After the revolution, professional sports were banned in Cuba, and existing baseball leagues were restructured for amateur play. The players remained world class, however, and a great number have defected to play for million dollar contracts in the U.S. In fact, after the leaders of the U.S. and Cuba moved to normalize relations, dozens of scouts from Major League Baseball immediately booked flights for the Caribbean with the hopes that it will now be easier to assess and acquire fresh talent for the big leagues. When I hear our national anthem, it gives me goosebumps because it's one of the most important patriotic symbols for us Cubans. Yeah, and it also means the game is about to start. We're all feeling pretty anxious right now. So play ball. <laughs>